Sinus of Valsalva aneurysm is usually due to a defect in the aortic media. A ventricular septal defect or aortic regurgitation may be found as associated abnormalities. Nearly 70% of aneurysms originate from the right coronary sinus. The aneurysm may compress an adjacent chamber, coronary artery or conduction system. This can cause myocardial ischemia or conduction disturbances. About one third of aneurysms rupture and produce acute symptoms in a quarter of patients. Important symptoms following rupture are dyspnea, chest pain and fatigue. If it ruptures into the right sided chambers, it produces a left to right shunt. The severity of shunt and associated lesions determine the severity of symptoms. Rupture of sinus of Valsalva aneurysm RSOV usually occurs into the right heart chambers. Rarely rupture can occur into the left heart chambers, pericardium, pulmonary artery or superior vena cava. Rupture into the pericardium can cause cardiac tamponade. The classical finding in RSOV to right ventricle is a continuous murmur with diastolic augmentation. The aneurysm track through the right ventricular wall gets compressed during systole and flow is better in diastole causing the diastolic augmentation of murmur. Rupture into the left ventricle will cause only a diastolic murmur. Echocardiography and magnetic resonance imaging are two important investigations for RSOV. Transesophageal echocardiography may give more details than a transthoracic echocardiogram. Occasionally, a sinus of Valsalva aneurysm may be detected prior to rupture as well. The classical echocardiographic appearance in RSOV to RV is a windsock appearance of the aneurysm in the right ventricular outflow tract. Windsock appearance is better seen on transesophageal echocardiography. Cardiac catheterization is seldom needed for diagnosis and coronary angiography may be done preoperatively prior to surgical repair. The first successful surgical closure of RSOV was reported by Lilihe et al. in 1957. Surgery is usually by dual exposure technique with both iota and the chamber of termination being explored. The aneurysmal sac is removed and the defect repaired either by direct suture or patch closure. Associated lesions like ventricular septal defect and aortic regurgitation will be tackled in the same surgical sitting. Aortic wall replacement may be needed in some cases. A purely transaortic repair of RSOV may cause post-operative aortic regurgitation by progressive distortion of the aortic sinus geometry. Device closure of RSOV is another option being increasingly used in suitable cases. The distance from the aortic end of the RSOV to the coronary ostium is specifically measured to check whether the device will impede coronary flow. In a report of 25 cases, different devices were used and devices were deployed using andrograde and retrograde approaches. A procedural success rate of 84% was achieved, including two patients who presented with cardiogenic shock. Two patients had residual leak and there was one case of device embolization. In one case, there was device-induced severe aortic regurgitation. Associated ventricular septal defect was closed simultaneously in one patient. Three patients were referred for surgery. Overall, the authors preferred andrograde approach using duct occluders in most cases and muscular ventricular septal defect occluders in select cases.